so let's talk about uh, or talk with big AI. And uh, anyway, this is John Rose from uh, Insights with John Rose. And I got Mike McDonald from Fluidstack with me. Uh, yeah, I'm going to let Mike explain what Fluidstack is and why we just called it big AI. Awesome. Thanks, John. Um, I'm Mike McDonald. I run product and engineering at Fluidstack. And Fluidstack is uh, an AI cloud platform built for the largest AI research labs, as well as uh, sovereign governments and large scale enterprises. And we're going from you know, clusters that we used to call big of 1,000 GPUs uh, to deploying a 20,000 GPU cluster of GB200s in France for Mistral to potentially even larger clusters, right? Pushing 100K plus GPU scale. So, so at the big AI scale, what kind of challenges and technology problems are you trying to solve with us? It's a, it's a great question. So when you start talking about massive scale, there are sort of two main problems. Um, one of them is just sort of building all of that as quickly as possible, right? Time to value is still the top thing that research labs and increasingly enterprises and governments care about in this space. The second part is the sort of operating that infrastructure reliably, right? And so we have to design it and build it for scale, and then we have to make sure that it operates reliably at scale. And this is actually a lot of the partnership with Dell, yeah. right? We're working very closely with the office of the CTO on the how do we go and design these large scale systems and implement them quickly and optimize the supply chain to right. go and deploy wherever we can get the appropriate amount of power and, yeah. and cooling and space. And then, the rest is sort of on us and, and working with our customers of how do we make sure that all of these massive GPU systems are able to, you know, when they inevitably fail, get yeah. sort of repaired and replaced and, and similar. You know, it's funny, one, one thing we, we always talk about is that there's these three AI markets. There's the pre-gen AI stuff, machine learning, reinforcement learning, computer vision, and then there's this training market, which it really is the big AI market, which you're in primarily, and then there's the enterprise. And, and they're, they used to be kind of separate, but they're very much blurry between them. And I've always said that the, the benefit the enterprise gets from the big AI world today is one, that's where the models are created that the enterprise that's, uses. That's super important. And the other is that we're working out these hard problems there. Like, you know, if we can make it easier and efficient and timely to deploy fluid stacks infrastructure, everything we learn there will make it infinitely easier for an enterprise to go on their journey. And so, you know, the advantage that we have as Dell, which is really interesting, is just being able to see that complete picture and derive value from it. So, you know, we appreciate you being the alpha and beta tester for the future enterprise. Of course. Um, but hey, let's pivot and talk about um, the ecosystem because yes. you're not like infrastructure in a vacuum. Things run on your infrastructure and some of them are actually very intersecting with Dell and our enterprise customers. Very, very yeah. much so. And so uh, your, your point on sort of what the enterprises, you know, what the enterprise needs and even what the enterprise of the future looks like, yeah. I think is intersecting here. Um, to your point, we don't just build massive supercomputers because it's fun. We have customers that are training massive foundational models and increasingly building, uh, you know, we have folks like Poolside building a Gentic software engineer. Yeah. Right, and so it's not just build a model for the sake of the model and then have people use it. It's how do we create, uh, you know, the next sort of software engineer augmented workforce, right. right? And they themselves will sort of become an enterprise along the way, right. after learning how to operate all of this massive infrastructure. Yeah. And I think we'll actually continue to see that. Of to your exact point, the technological problems that we go through and solve building these training clusters. We then still operate them as inference clusters at right. massive scale, powering those enterprise workloads. Yeah. So if you ever wondered if you're maybe a user of Poolside or Mistral, where did this come from? <laughs> well, it was built in this environment, and you know it's the the, the circle of life of AI in this world. Um, but let, last thing, let's talk about like the future because you have this massive infrastructure and you're good at building it, and you have existing customers. The enterprise market is just getting going and enterprises are still figuring out exactly what they're going to do. And I think a lot of us have figured that out and are now in production, but we're also figuring out where we're going to do it. And while we know that, you know, there's some opportunities in cloud environments that tends to be a little costly and complex sometimes, but it's a good place to start. We know that the uh, enterprise data centers are a great place to do this. Edge is a great place. Even AIPCs are a great place to do certain AI use cases. But there are, there are other use cases that, quite frankly, might not fit into those environments. You know, if you get and decide you want to build a foundation model or you want to do a heavy amount of fine tuning or you have an extremely large capacity inference need, you know, our, our 
belief is, look, there is now a very wide spectrum of opportunities to kind of choose as the infrastructure of choice. And you guys and your whole sector has emerged as a brand new option. You didn't yes. exist a few years ago. There wasn't that option of kind of going to an at scale GPU infrastructure provider. So how, how, do you, how do you see the you know, kind of future relationship with enterprises and things you could provide to them as they, they kind of get to scale? Yeah. I mean, ultimately, we're in the business of making customer outcomes, yep. and that requires us going as deep down the infrastructure as is required, yep. right? And if it's go and build a public cloud, you know, we can do that, and we have done that very successfully. If it's deploy private cloud infrastructure in someone else's colo, we can do that. Or, you know, we have a gigawatt MOU from the French government, yep. and that is greenfield data center build out in support of yep. those foundational models, you know, sovereign entities and those enterprises. Yep. Well, we you know we have a global footprint, and you know you you probably are very close to the activity going on in the EU around building out the sovereign infrastructure. And what we know in sovereign uh, sovereign cloud strategies is that there's different approaches, but there and sometimes you do all of them. Sometimes that infrastructure is being built to power the government. That's a perfectly good reason. Sometimes there's no infrastructure at all. It's just the government wanting to be a facilitator. And then there's this middle ground, which is the government realizing that if they actually build out infrastructure at scale and make it available to the private yes. sector, they catalyze and accelerate their industrial base, which is kind of important for their economic outcomes. And so you're seeing all that's, of that. That's exactly true. And, and again, I think with, with our, our work with the French government, it is very much uh, sort of consortium building, yep. right? And and. France has very much capitalized on their excess nuclear energy and said, instead of exporting electricity, let's export intelligence, yeah. right? And they can bring their industrial base, they can bring you know, the Mistral and, and their fantastic education system yeah. together. We bring that all together. We have the, the box in which it all goes in and, and the infrastructure yeah. that you all provide, and boom, we can now switch from that yeah. energy to that intelligence. Great, uh, you know, Mike, thanks for, thanks for joining. I mean, of this course. is hopefully a, for those of you who aren't that familiar with like where some of these things begin, what's behind all of this stuff that you're using, this is a, a great glimpse into it, but also another example of the kind of ever expanding AI infrastructure options that are materializing that are gonna actually power the enterprise of the future. So Mike, thanks awesome. for being here. Great, Thank you great as well. Talking to you. Okay.